Next up, another mag base. Um, and, you know, I don't need any more mag bases, that's for sure. But this one's in the original box. And what I liked about this one is that this one, it says um, Fuzz <laughs> 314-001. But it also says UASA International Incorporated New York. Uh, UASA is a Japanese company that makes some pretty nice stuff. A lot of people have had um, UASA rotary tables and vices and things like that uh, or fixtures call it fixtures and things like that so this one's clearly marked made in japan uesa international fuji magnetic base uh, so this is actually a pretty good quality mag base and it seems to be in perfect working condition so uh figured hey since it's there with the original box um and he didn't need it um i was able to snag this for resale he also found this, uh, which is an interesting, interesting device here. What we've got is, God, I guess, I guess you would call it a fly cutter, right? Because it's like a fly cutter. It appears to use regular uh, lathe inserts. All right, so we've got two of them in there, but check it out. It looks like this thing could take up to six inserts in there at a whack. So I don't think I'm going to end up using this. I don't really have much interest in it, but I noticed it was on the um, R8 shank. A little bit of damage there. Uh, and this R8 shank is the type of shank that could take other types of heads or cutters. So there's no harm in having an extra one of those laying around. I don't know, maybe I'll see if I've got any, uh, maybe I'll see if I've got six matching uh, brazed carbide lathe tools. Because that, be, that might be fun to play around with. Next up, we got another Sterrett item here, and this is a uh, mag base indicator holder, another 657. Now, the 657AA probably indicates that that's the part number for the box, because a lot of these Sterrett items you can order without the box. And, yeah, so we got another 657. Yeah, so I just checked. Uh, this will make number six <laughs> uh, 657s that I have in my inventory right now so I guess I'll I don't know I have to have a sale or something next up we get a couple indicators we got the fantastic and and the uh, not so fantastic so let's start with the fantastic first we've got a nice interrapid um, this thing's in pristine condition this is a point zero 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 five so this is a half thousandths resolution indicator uh, and this is a model 312b-2 it's very clean. Very clean. I'm loving the condition on this. I'm a big fan of the Interrapids, so even the stem looks pristine. I'm wondering if this thing's ever seen use. There's just a little bit of rubbing on the dovetail there that indicates maybe this has been clamped previously. It's a really nice one. I should get around to selling some of these. I'm starting to get too many Interrapids. Like, I mean, really don't need that many. And this is, well, the box is Tech Lock, which is a cheap, uh, you know, I thought it was Chinese import, but I think some of these Tech Locks are actually, yeah, see, made in Japan. So it's, it's an import, um, but it's probably a little bit better than your no name generic um no name generic chinese indicator so zero to uh one inch travel tech lock corporation seems like it's in really good condition has been used and it's got the little uh it's got the little clamping attachment there so that's nice and you know the original box doesn't hurt even though it's only a tech lock. Oh, next up, uh, we found these things there. This is ample evidence that the uh, person whose uh, shop this was was probably a uh, serious hoarder because 
there was nothing in the whole place that would uh, use these. These are big Cat 50, Category 50, uh, call it adapters. So these are to go from uh, Cat 50 to uh, ER100 collets. And they're brand new old stock. And they're still wrapped in the protective plastic that has that, that oil stuff all over it. You can see the paperwork in there. There's the, the Allen screw, uh, the little Allen wrench, I think, that's in there, too. Um, so, I mean, they're... These were pretty expensive. Uh, new. They have the... They have the original MSC label on them. This one... Actually, just has the Ericsson label with the Ericsson part number on it. But this one, which is the same thing, also has the MSC label. So it was clear that these were probably ordered out of the MSC catalog back in 2016. And uh, I looked these up, and in MSC, these were almost $200 a piece. So it's a shame because um, up here in my area, I mean, I don't even know any guys that have any uh, Cat 50 machines. I mean, we're talking, that's some that's a big old honking mill there. So if somebody wanted to run uh, an ER100 collet setup on their big mill, they would want to use one of these. So this is the kind of thing that, you can still buy these new. I think I saw somebody selling these on eBay brand new for like 170 bucks a piece. Uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to end up getting for these, but we'll give it a shot. And that's going to bring us to the uh, first of the final three machinist items from this haul. I found this tart tucked in a dark corner of the workshop. And uh, this is something that I thought was really kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, it's gotten some some moisture has gotten to it, but this is a uh, an old Starrett uh, dial indicator on a stand. Uh, they're calling this the Starrett 652 652 dial bench gauge. You see the uh, LS Starrett Athol Massachusetts 652 dial bench gauge, and then it says. Dial indicator number 25B, so that must be the uh, the indicator that was installed on it when it was shipped. So what we've got in here is a uh, basically a drop test drop drop indicator with the lever that is very sticky from years of just sitting, and uh, I guess for storage this was swung out of the way, but if we Rotate. If we loosen this, oh, that should spin. Hmm. I wonder if that's seized on there. I would expect we should be able to swing this bracket around so that this table is underneath the uh, underneath the drop indicator here, but it's not moving. This is like some sort of stop ring. Yeah, that's rust in there. I can see it. So this is gonna this is gonna take some serious love to get this thing working again. And in the end, the reality is it's just an old antique thing that probably only a weirdo like me is gonna really appreciate. Reminds me of this old Federal that I picked up a while back. Which is uh, in the same boat, by the way, as far as just, you know, a really old, antiquated piece of history. This one, at least the indicator actually works perfectly fine on this one. But it's, you know, the crystal is badly yellowed. And it's got all of this rust on the uh, outer bezel. So, I mean, to make this really pretty again, I'd have to send this out have a new crystal installed and have it all cleaned up and everything and it's just not not worth it to me because it's just really it's just a display piece for me now it's a little conversation piece 
that's probably what this poor old girl's gonna end up being somebody wrote somebody like engraved on here uh, finger type dies and gauges <laughs> it's not kind of interesting finger type dies and gauges inside the case here with this are <laughs> believe it or not extra extra tables I don't even know if you would call these anvils I guess they're kind of like anvils right so it's two of those There's this interesting little doohickey. What the heck is that? So that's a that's a round piece of stock that's got a flat on one side. That's been drilled. It's got a screw going through it to attach it to this piece. This piece has another screw in there. I don't know what the heck this is. I don't know if this belongs to this at all. And then uh, what's in the bottom here uh, with various amounts of rust on it is uh, an, a crazy amount of points. Contact points. So might be able to use some of those. They're not too, too rusty. All right. It didn't take too much force for me to break that free. So, but... <laughs> I can move it up just enough to expose. Look at that's what the post used to look like. <laughs> and that's what it looks like now. That almost looks like it's a patina that's supposed to be there, but then no, that's actually just how it how it corroded. So we move that in there like that. Oh yeah, sure. Now we're right back in business. Ooh. Yeah, it's funny, that dial indicator looks so clean, but boy, is it stuck. Huh. It's interesting how that's mounted to that, too. So, somebody put a sticker up on top of this. Uh, it says 70 pounds. And I believe that that is correct. There's actually two stickers on top that say 70 pounds. So we're looking at what is known as a camelback straight edge. And uh, this particular one has a uh, almost like a dovetail shape to it. So this uh, is a 48 inch camelback straight edge. And bottom side... Is all hand scraped and it's in pretty good shape there's a couple of I could feel nicks on the top knife edge here so those will have to be probably just take a stone to them and clean them up a little bit but otherwise it seems like it's in pretty good shape it's a pretty old one um, this one's clearly marked that it's uh, J.C. Bush, B-U-S-C-H company. Uh, and it looks like it says M-I-L-W and then a space W-I-S. So I would say that's Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it's marked with a number 6648. And this company, uh, Bush Precision, is still in business today and in fact I looked in their current catalog and found they still make a camelback dovetail straight edge uh, and they still use 6648 for their part numbers because they call them the 6600 series and the 48 means that this is a 48 inch long one the newest version of these the shapes of the holes are different instead of being circles they're sort of like oblong holes so they're you know they're they're different 
even though they're using the same part number. So this is a, a heck of a tool. Uh, this is, I believe this is used for determining the flatness of a surface like the ways on a lathe or a table on a grinder or a milling machine when you're uh, scraping that uh, table and trying to get it back into perfect flatness. So this is not something I foresee having a use for. Uh, this is something that a lot of the YouTube machinist rock stars like uh, you know um, Keith Rucker, for instance, uh, you know he'll have one of these up there on a shelf in the background there. So it's just a, it's a nice eye candy to look at. Um, of course, he's he's had uh, oh, I forget the gentleman's name with Mr. King, I think uh, the gentleman who does scraping classes. I think he's had him down in his shop doing scraping classes, so they were probably able to maybe uh, utilize this during the scraping classes, this tool. So I'm going to be looking to resell it. Um, my initial thought was uh, to keep it, especially since on this pick, I didn't get just one, I got two. So this one, they marked with 68 pounds, so it's two pounds lighter than the other one. Uh, this one has these interesting, these are actually wood blocks that are very dark with uh, age. I don't know if they're painted or if they're just oil or what, but I, I didn't realize they were wood until I saw the corner here. So these are wood blocks that are on the top. Um, my understanding is that the wood blocks actually are to help insulate your body temperature from your hands when you're touching this from from altering the geometry of the straight edge so this one here i haven't found any markings on it yet this is a more traditional camelback straight edge it's also a 48 inch uh, but this has just the flat surface on the bottom it doesn't have any it doesn't have a dovetail on it so I guess that makes this one back here more versatile. So by virtue of the fact that this has uh, uh, got the edge, uh, the dovetail edge on it, and it has a known manufacturer's name on it, I would say right now this is probably the more valuable of the two. Uh, prices on these are all over the place. So uh, I'm going to have to wait to see whether or not you know, this is the kind of thing that's very difficult to ship, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to sell it to somebody locally, I don't know. But it's, uh, they're quite interesting, and they are, you know, taking up room here, so hopefully we'll be able to sell them sooner than later. I think what I'm going to do right now is, this one's so filthy, I think I'm going to clean this up, wipe it off a little bit, just to see if I can find any markings that might indicate to me the manufacturer of this particular one. And just in case anybody wanted to see the underside of this one, see what it looks like. Aha! I could say without a doubt that I'm probably never going to know who made this. I checked, uh, and I wiped off a lot of dirt. And uh, I could see that it originally had black lacquer paint on it that's worn off in a lot of areas. Uh, now I've switched it around end for end and clearly see the wood grain in the wood block handle here. But I can't find any markings to indicate uh, engraved or stamping that would indicate uh, the manufacturer of this thing. Uh, it is marked with the uh, pink paint pen here done the word done d-o-n-e 4-98 i'm going to assume that that means that in april of 1998 was the last time that this was either inspected and checked or scraped to bring back uh you know, to bring it back up to uh to the tolerance that it needs to be so anyways i guess we'll stop here uh that's the end of the machinist items from this haul uh so at uh upcoming video 
I'll be uh, bringing you some uh, looks at some of the vintage electronic test equipment that I picked up at this pick. Uh, there was a little bit of everything in this place. And uh, you guys might find, some of you guys might find this stuff kind of interesting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if so, please hit the like button or the thumbs up button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.